I started and run the Powell Owners Group on Facebook, and I want to do a comparison between my 1954 Powell Sport Wagon, my 1956 Powell Sport Wagon, 1955 Powell Sport Wagon. The green one on the left here, that one's number 1508 on the early trucks, like the 54, they started in the 1500 series. Um, so that one's number actually 1508, so that's the eighth one off of the assembly line. Um, the one in the center here, I don't remember the number. And uh, the red, red and white truck is number 172. So this comparison between the three different years and the 57, uh, very much similar to the 56, um, except they've changed some of the trim. All right, so here's the serial number on this white pal. It's a PMC, and the PMC is underneath that flange right there. It's underneath here, so I gotta take this bolt out and then pound that thing back, and then so the DMV can see it. P, uh, PMC 2637 on this white truck. So this is the 54 Powell, and the very distinctive differences in the 54 is. They have a cowl vent. Uh, the other trucks don't have cowl vent. This one's got the cowl vent. And the back end has these big bulbous panels. There's nothing behind them. These are bulbous. And the uh, tailgate was wood. And the panels down here below were also wood. The front and rear bumpers were oak. And I would imagine that the tailgate and the other pieces down here were also oak. And I do still have the tailgate and the right piece down here, uh, which I'll uh, show you here in a moment. So here's the wood tailgate in place. It won't slide down any farther because it's uh, rotten. And then uh, they only had one brake light. Brake light, tail light went on that board there. And then the turn signals were on either side. Turn signals. And it looks like they had a little short vertical board here for a stiffener. And one here. And one there. And then, I'm not sure this is original. Or why you'd even need it, but somebody put uh, these uh, slide bolts on it. It would slide into those holes there. Uh, the back window on the 54, you can see, is a lot larger than the 55 and the 56. Um, and the other difference is in the 54, the way the doors are made. So on the 55 uh, and 56, what holds in the glass? is a, a piece of angled metal goes here and uh, here here's the 56 and the 55 style so it's a uh, double slider piece of channel and this piece of angle metal goes underneath so that's the difference in the doors. And that's got a Chevy steering column in it, uh, sadly. It was put in by the previous owner who was adding um, a straight six uh, Mustang engine and he was adding power steering and he discarded the steering column. Lucky for me, I found a 1940 Plymouth steering column complete and somebody else was building a hot rod and I got this other piece of steering column. Um, from a 41 Plymouth, which is what's supposed to be in here is 41 Plymouth parts. So if you look at this, uh, the way this is assembled, it's all screwed together. This whole cab can be dismounted from the body. These are all 
these are all arc welded on, but technically it would be easy to dismantle the upper cab sheet metal because it's just all screwed together. And I'll probably have to do that on this one to uh, when I restore it. And then up here, it's all screwed together. And over here, it's all blind rivets. So the rivets could be drilled out and then taken apart and cleaned up and, and uh, restored. Uh, I noticed earlier when I first bought this vehicle, it has a front sway bar. It's kind of unusual for a PAL. Somebody must have put it on. It's the same color as the uh, truck though. It's got the overspray on it. So it probably came that way from the factory. And if you don't know where the serial number is on a Powell, if you find a Powell and you want to check the serial number, it's easy to do on the, on the, on the 1500 series. It's right here. And I'll show you on the 56, this piece of sheet metal is actually on top of the serial number. So when I take it into the DMV, I'm going to have to move that off. Now, somebody stamped an extra set of numbers on this one, which is super annoying, because uh, the 1508, it never said PMC 1508, and they also stamped the numbers in upside down. And when, uh, when the previous owner got this truck, it had a, uh, a Spitfire motor in it, which is a 25-inch long block, so they had to cut away the firewall, which is unfortunate. I also see that they removed the battery tray. Not really sure where it goes, but there's a lot of extra cutting in this area. So the battery end might have been on this side on the 54. I'll have to get some pictures from the guy that's got number 1506. So this is uh, the way they were assembled. They didn't have any um, body mounts. They're all d welded directly to the chassis. The bodies are welded directly to the chassis. These brackets here are not original. These are for the Mustang loader. Yeah. So this is where the spare tire goes in the back. Right above the gas tank, which I also noticed is missing. But uh, they're easy to get. They sell them on uh, eBay, about 150 bucks or so. And the drive shaft's also missing off those when the previous owner threw it away with the steering column, which is sad. But here, you can see that, that bar right there, that bar right there, the ones up front, and the ones uh, farther forward, they're all holding the body on. So you can see they're directly mounted to the chassis. No rubber mounts. So this is the way they were made. Easy. Simple. Assembly. Powell. And this is the 55. This is the one that was purchased from Arizona. was restored by Jeff Peterson in the 90s. Has been in quite a few magazines. The headlights are originally uh, black like that. They're not normally chrome. Somebody overdid this one. They don't have chrome bumpers. They never had chrome bumpers. But somebody wanted to spiff up the 56. And I put aluminum radiator in this one because the other one sprang a big leak. I still have it. So this one is painted inside and out. It was not painted underneath. And these bolts here are for a vintage style heater that's probably era. Uh, though these vehicles didn't come with heaters. It's uh, the original emblem. It might be a reproduction. So the 55 has uh, Yankee 975 marker lights on the back. They have Tiger Eye. That's T I G E R E Y. Tiger Eye. With yellow colored 
lens that points supposed to point down to the license plate. And these look like Yankee 975s as well. In red, front ones are white, obviously clear. This uh, truck was ordered with one fishing pole tube. And the fishing pole tube slides out about six feet. Yep, still there, still coming. There it is. Now obviously, you don't want to let go of it until you're. We just keep chairs in it for the car shows. Sometimes we could put ice and drinks, fill it up with ice and sodas and stuff to take to the shows. So, so my other 55, number 83, didn't have a fishing pole tube. Either didn't come with it or it wasn't available at the time. And that, that was truck number 83. So apparently uh, this is the only towel that was made with a bed mount spare wheel. On the 55 and 54 trucks, the doors open fully all the way around. I think they should have put a rubber bumper on there somewhere to keep the body from getting smashed, but they didn't do it. Simple, these are simple trailer locks um, that you can get, simple. And these are unknown, nobody knows what these go to. Although when I was up at uh, LeMay, they were speculating that they were off of uh, mobile homes or motor homes or trailers or they told me houses, but I'm not sure. The speedometer on this 55, Probably restored. I don't think you'd ever find a brand new one. But uh, I didn't really ask Jeff what it was. New or restored. The dashboard is masonite. The door panels are masonite. I don't know what the ashtray is out of. It might be out of a 41 Plymouth. And then the uh, glove box has the same rubber around it as it is on the windshield. Uh, not sure that's original. The mirror, it's been chromed. Usually they're painted. There's no headliners. No headliner appell. So that's the rear view mirror. That's 41 Plymouth. It's got these little holes up here. I'm not sure what those are about. It's got uh, two in the middle. And somebody's done a real good deal detailing job on the inside of this truck. It's got, it's been freshly, it's paint, painted. Normally it would be just, you know, painted, no headliner. And another door handle. Another window lock. Looks like 41 Plymouth uh, knobs. I've seen them for sale on uh, eBay. And at uh, other places, somebody chromed the steering column support and has repainted the handle. It still has the foot starter working. There's the heater that's been installed. And uh, they upgraded to electric wipers, even though it should have been a vacuum wiper until 56. I used to think that that mahogany piece there was not original, but I've seen it on a bunch of other trucks. So, also, this on the 54 and 55 is not adjustable. I'll show you the one on the 56, it is adjustable. Uh, this should only have one tail light in the back, brake, tail and brake, and the two turn signals. And it uh, looks like the original rear bumper, or it may have been uh, reproduced. There's the door stoppers on the 56. And 56 
has this extra piece of metal here along the edge. Gotta be a windbreak. Because the 55 doesn't have it and the 54 doesn't have it. All I've ever noticed that was wrong with the pal driving the pal is the doors bang while you're driving down the highway. So this extra piece of metal. And then my station wagon, it was a 56, it had another piece of metal in here that was it was right fit right in the it was a little bit curved. Let's see if we can find a picture. Now this steering wheel, I'm not sure what that's a Kaiser or if it's uh, something else. Mirror mount is welded on the 54 and 55 screwed on and the ashtray no clue what that is it's bracketry to hold the windshield at the bottom I don't know why they needed it unless the body doesn't go up like on the 54 and 55 this one's got a black gauge uh, why is it a black one I'm not sure. Maybe it's off a different year. And somebody chromed the handbrake and the steering column. Still got the foot starter on this one. This one has a steel dashboard. All the other vehicles are wood. Or masonite, so that's kind of cool. And it's got a wider, nicer glove box. That's tin, all tin. That's kind of cool. So it's going to be a nice truck when I get it together. So that's the, that's a good comparison between the '55 and the '56 and the '54. Let's look at the engine on the 55. This is the engine compartment on the 55. The battery over here. I put this in. This is a uh, brake fluid reservoir made out of a, a PVC glue glue can. I just took the brush off. And I put it on the body with a muffler clamp. And it goes all the way down. And you got to fight getting down there when you're doing brakes. It's all the way down and you got to take out the floor and everything to get to it and it's been upgraded to a 12 volt uh, one wire alternator and the radiator is aluminum it's got the original style air filter not oil bath it just looks like it is and the original ball and ball carburetor and I converted to negative ground and I was using dot five fluid but I changed it back out and somebody put a regular horn I'm not sure that's the original horn or not all right here's the 56 this one's still six volts here's a voltage regulator six volt battery six volt coil it's missing a spark plug uh, the original style radiator. It's not a honeycomb though. Should be a honeycomb. And then the, the, the hood supports on this one are round. The hood supports on this one and my other 55 are flat bar stock. So I can guarantee you that the earlier ones had flat bar stock because I had it on my other vehicle. Now we don't know what this is about. Normally it would just one, be one piano hinge that would connect the, the two halves. Maybe somebody remade the hood. I don't know. It looks like the original hood. It's got all the supports and stuff in it. It's been notched out for the radiator. Maybe it's got the wrong radiator in it. I really think this PAL was made this way with this wide strip in the middle. 
because if you look at it, it's got the factory per factory bins on the inside. It's got the factory bracketry, part of the flange. It's original. And if you look on this side, it's it's in the right place. It's got that body gasket on there. So I'm thinking it's thinking that's original. Looks like the B and B carburetor. But I tried to rotate it the other week and it no, no it doesn't want to go. Seems seized to me. This is a nineteen fifty six Powell sport wagon. Uh, this is where the spare tire goes. See the spare tire is in there. See if somebody's cleaned up the chassis a little bit. Looks like it's been repainted. So this just goes on. Can't do it one handed. thing I forgot to mention is the pull handle on the 56 is uh, it's like a cabinet door handle just like a cabinet door handle and the other one on the 55 is a knob like a knurled lathe turned knob um, also when the PAL has two bed tubes, they put the gas filler down here instead of on the side. So that's the three vehicles, the 55, 56, and 54 PAL trucks. Finally got around in my comparison video. I sure like the back window on that 54 though, that's, that's pretty awesome. It's huge see out I can barely see out I look I turn to look out behind me on the the red and white truck and forget it there's no way all I see is the wall um, I do have an extra uh, bed drawer that uh, I had made for the other 55 I had so hopefully it's gonna fit in here <laughs>